Welcome to Mr. News Art Class. It's wonderful to see your smiling faces. Let's talk today about an artist who used his community and his surroundings to be an inspiration for his artwork. Frank Calloway was an African-American man who was born into segregated Alabama in the year 1915. He lived to be 99 years old. When he was a child, he did enjoy drawing, but he never had an art teacher or an art class. He took his first art class when he was over 60 years old. <gasps> Frank Calloway drew on huge rolls of paper with regular markers and crayons. His artwork depicted imagery from the rural South. Things like train stations, farm animals, apartment buildings, farm equipment, and trains. Visually, Frank Calloway's artwork was mostly constructed of simple basic shapes, and those geometric shapes were placed on the page in ways that looked very flat and two-dimensional, with very little overlapping and very little in the way of the background. In the style of Frank Calloway, we'll be drawing trains today. Here I have cut my paper in half long ways. So this is one sheet of paper, but cut into two long pieces. And the reason for that is because Frank Calloway drew on long scrolls of paper. We're gonna tape or glue these two together. We're not gonna tape them together yet or glue them together yet. We'll do that at the end, uh, but that's gonna make one long piece instead of a normal sized sheet. On uh, one of these half sheets of paper, I'm gonna draw the front of the train. And uh, you could start with a black marker or a pencil or whatever. Um, Frank Calloway's pictures, he usually started with a black marker doing outlines and then coloring them in. Um, if you want to be able to erase your mistakes, you could start with a pencil and then Go from there. I'm gonna start with a Sharpie marker, black Sharpie marker, permanent marker. You do what works for you. Now, uh, on this first half sheet of paper, we're uh, gonna have the train engine and the coal car. That's the front half of a train. Uh, so let's go ahead and start on this side, the left side by uh, making a, a biggish rectangle. We wanna leave a little bit of space at the top, but um, we want this rectangle to fill almost half of that uh, strip of paper. Then up on top of that, we're gonna have a trapezoid shape. And this trapezoid shape is uh, sort of the opening at the top of the coal car where there's gonna be a big pile of coal inside here. So let's go ahead and draw in a big lump of coal and we'll darken that in black, why not? Um, we'll go ahead and do that now because, uh, and just this lump, not the whole thing, just this lump, uh, the, the pile of coal sticking out the top would be black coal. So we're gonna darken that in you could use a marker, you could use a crayon. I'm using this Sharpie. Um, but just darken in that lump of coal. And so it's like a big pile of coal, right? And that should be like a big bumpy lumpy line uh, because you can imagine it as a whole bunch of little chunks of coal in a big pile. Anyway, uh, once you're done making the pile of coal up at the top, we need two wheels down at the bottom. Now the wheels are going to be uh, pretty big circles and notice how they overlap that line at the bottom of the rectangle, okay? Uh, and those two wheels also need to be darkened in black. So take your time, don't, like you don't wanna scribble it like that. Um, you wanna take your time to darken it in all the way. Don't leave any empty gaps. 
um, especially you want to cover up this black line from the bottom of the rectangle. So take your time darkening those wheels in. And uh, that black gives us a little bit of contrast, that dark black. And it also um, sort of balances with this dark black up at the top, the dark black of the coal. And as well as it helps to overlap that line at the bottom of the rectangle. Once you are uh, done with those wheels, you can uh, decorate your coal car if you want, or we could come back to decorate those later. Uh, what I'm gonna do is move on to the engine in front of the coal car, and then we'll come back and we'll kind of decorate everything all at the end. So moving on to the engine in front of the coal car, we want it to be real close together. We don't, we don't want them touching each other, but we, we do want them to be close together. I'm gonna start um, the engine here with a tall, skinny rectangle. And uh, this is gonna be kind of the area where the conductor uh, works. And, um, you know, so he can reach back to get coal to put it into the engine. And then there's gonna be a longer, like not as tall, so short, but long this way, right? It's gonna be long, but it's gonna be short, right? It's long horizontally, but it's short vertically, right? So it almost makes like a, a big L and uh, we can go ahead and draw the two wheels while we're at it. Um, so I'm gonna put one of my wheels here and then the other wheel up front and then darken those in just like we did with these. Darken those all the way in. And uh, then we're also gonna need to add the roof on top. We're gonna need to add a window. We're gonna need to add a smokestack. And we're gonna need to add the cattle pusher at the front. That's like the little triangle bit. We'll do that in a minute. Uh, let, but take your time to darken in those wheels again. Same reasons as before. We wanna overlap this dark line that we made here. And we want some contrast. And we want to have some, uh, some balance between the other dark areas on the page. We're also, just like these wheels were balanced by some coal up above, we're gonna balance these with some smoke up above. We'll talk about that when we make the smoke stack next. But take your time to finish up darkening in those wheels like that. There we go. Next, I'm gonna add a very quick rooftop up on top of the tall rectangle part. And then I'm gonna make a square on top of this rectangle, uh, this is gonna be the smokestack. So it's gonna be about like a square with a trapezoid shaped opening on top of it. And then there's gonna be smoke coming out and I'm gonna use a, a wiggly bumpy line for that. And notice how the smoke uh, trails back towards the back of the train as it goes up. And that's because the train is moving this way. The smoke is just going straight up, but the train is moving this way. So it looks like the smoke goes backwards. And uh, we wanna darken in that smoke completely black. Again, you could use a black marker, a black crayon, um, whatever works for you. Take your time to fill it in all the way and make it look lumpy bumpy. Kind of like that. All right, so now here at the front, let's add the cattle pusher. That's like the triangle thing. Notice what kind of triangle it is. Notice how it's flat with the bottom of the train, right? It doesn't like poke out in front. It's like flat with the bottom of the train. And then it's gonna have these uh, diagonal stripes that go through it. 
And uh, then we need a window over here. This is where the conductor is doing his job, the conductor of the train. We'll draw him in a minute. Uh, we also need to connect these two train cars, the engine to the coal car. And so let's just draw it down low, not all the way at the bottom, but down low, just one straight line, uh, maybe actually two really close together. So it looks like there's some kind of a chain or a, or a loop holding those two together. And now we can draw the conductor in this um, window. And in the style of Frank Calloway, we're going to use basic shapes to do that. So I'm going to draw a circle for the head. I'm going to draw a profile view. So we're, we're not seeing the front of the face. We're seeing a sideways face. So I'm going to see one eyeball on this side, like facing the front of the train. I'm going to see his smile. Right, so it looks like I'm seeing the side of the face, right? And a triangle for his nose. Next, I'm gonna draw a rectangle for his body. And I can darken that in, or I can color it with stripes or whatever. I'm just gonna go ahead and darken it all the way in. Um, he's wearing a dark uniform. And he's also gonna have a hat of some kind, a conductor's hat of some kind, or helmet. Something to, something on top of his head. And then if you want, you can add little levers, little chains that he might have to pull on, and you can add his arms. Um, make his arms, if you're gonna draw his arms, make them thicker, don't draw them just as a line. See how it made that nice and thick? And so he's got his arms pulling those little levers, doing his job, condu conducting the train. Now, this is the front half of our train. We're going to come back and do some decorations on it, coloring it in, making little signs on it, things like that. But first, we want to kind of connect our two papers together and draw the back half of the train here. Now, again, I'm not going to glue these or tape these two papers together yet, but uh, what I want to do is uh, think about where they're going to overlap each other, how they're going to connect, and I want to draw the next train car back here behind, but they need to be connected like this. So, uh, for starters, I'm just going to draw a, a big rectangle I'm going to make it as tall as the coal car and it's going to be it's going to take fill up about half of this sheet maybe the whole thing if you want one really long train car but if you want like two train cars you could uh, split split this page and do two uh, but anyway i'm going to make this a really big rectangle and if, if these two papers are going to be glued together right here, those two train cars are going to be connected just like these two are. And so I'm going to draw my two lines like this. And then that will help me know when I'm ready to glue these together, I need to put line those lines up and put it together. Okay. Now I can work on this half without uh, this piece getting in the way. So I can set this off to the side. And here, I'm going to make this into an animal car. So uh, I'm going to make the two wheels like I've been doing and darken those all the way in like I've been doing. Take your time, darken it all the way in black. As a matter of fact, I do have this big fancy Sharpie that I can color it in black a little quicker. Uh, I wish I had thought about that earlier. Um, anyway, yeah, just make sure you color it all the way in black, these wheels. And uh, take your time to make sure you get it inside the lines without going over the edges. And then we're going to turn this into an animal car. It's going to be like a, like a big cage uh, to carry animals. Now, it could be 
farm animals getting carried from one farm to another, or it could be circus animals like giraffes and stuff. You can decide, but either way, here's how we're going to make this big rectangle into an animal car. We're going to start right here level with the, um, the connector between the two train cars. We're going to start right where that connector is and just draw a horizontal line all the way across. And so that splits the big rectangle into two rectangles, one that's really small and one that's kind of tall. In this big tall rectangle, the bottom one we're going to leave alone, but in this big tall rectangle, we're going to make a bunch of vertical lines. These are the bars of the cage holding the animals in. And we're just going to try to evenly space those. And, oh, it's a pattern. It's a line. 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 They make a pattern. How cool is that? And when you're done with those, you can draw whatever kinds of animals in here you want. Um, so, like, if it's, if it's going to be farm animals getting carried from one farm to another farm, uh, then you can draw horses, cows, uh, pigs, those kind of things. Uh, or if it's going to be circus animals, you could do that. Now, Frank Calloway, it normally would have been farm animals in his pictures. You could draw those now with your uh, pencil or your black Sharpie marker or whatever you're using. I'm going to do it later with color so that I can have like a pink pig or things like that. And if you want to have another uh, car back here behind it, you can do that. Um, you could do two animal cars. You could do an animal car and a, a freight car. That would just be a freight car was just a... a train car that carries stuff, right? You can pack it full of stuff. Uh, you can do a passenger car, which means uh, full of people, you know, or you could do a caboose, right? There's really no wrong way to do it. I'm going to do another animal car because that's kind of what Frank Calloway did a lot of in his pictures. So here's, uh, I could do a caboose, I guess, but I'm going to go ahead and finish off here with another one of these animal cars. You decide. And then, like I said, when you are done with your train cars, you can glue your papers together and uh, you can decorate, you can color, you can add whatever you need to add to finish. Uh, your picture. When you are done drawing everything, uh, you can, this would be a good time to either use a glue stick or a piece of tape to connect everything. I'm going to do a piece of tape on the back. So <clears throat> what I'm actually going to do is line these up like this and press that down and that tape on the back of my page is going to hold it together while I color. Now, Frank Calloway would have colored with crayons and markers, just simple crayons and markers. Mostly he used markers, but sometimes he used crayons too. Um, the, the big difference is the markers are always going to be a very bold color, whereas with crayons, if you need something to be lightly colored, so I'm going to show you on the back what I'm talking about here. With crayons, <clears throat> uh, I can push hard to get a nice bold color, 
or I could hold my crayon further back like this and be soft and gentle and and you see the difference you see it's not quite as thick and bold of a color right so if you need a color that's lighter and not quite so saturated you could totally use your crayons to do that I am for the most part just going to use my markers Although, before I do, there are a couple of little decorations I want to do. I want to make some uh, little frames or signs or something on these um, train cars. You do what you want to do. You decorate them how you want, and uh, we'll come back at the end and see how they turned out.
And there are a few little last minute pointers that I want to give about coloring in the style of Frank Calloway. Uh, first of all is looking at the ground and the sky. We have talked in other videos about the background, what's below and what's above. Now, if you take a look at Frank Calloway's pictures, he did not color the sky up above. He just left that all white. But he did usually color the ground, or in some of his train pictures, he just drew a black line for the railroad tracks, but sometimes he'd draw the grass, color the grass green, things like that. Um, so in your pictures, if you're trying to follow along and copy the style of Frank Calloway, we'll, we'll color the ground, but we'll leave the sky white. That includes where we can see through the bars of our... Um, you know, cages and through the window, those areas just left white. Um, for animals, uh, I did not draw black outlines around my horse. I did draw black outlines around my pig because the pig is such a bright pink that I wanted to contrast against the black, uh, against the white background. Uh, so I did draw a black outline around that. So it stands out and it's easier to see. And um, lastly, Frank Calloway was an African-American, uh, so most of the people in his community were as well. And uh, that's why I used a brown to color the face of the conductor here. Um, you know, there's lots of different skin tones. There's lots of different colors that skin comes in. And uh, in the case of this picture, I chose to use brown because I'm trying to follow along the style of Frank Calloway, and his pictures usually had darker-skinned individuals in them. So anyway, that is my finished Frank Calloway-style train. Chugga-chugga-choo-choo! In today's lesson, we learned about a local Alabama artist named Frank Calloway, who used simple two-dimensional geometric shapes to create pictures that reminded him of the rural South where he grew up. In our next lesson, we'll talk about Pablo Picasso's ability to look at multiple different sides of things at the same time. I can't wait to see you then.